And let's start with the big story dominating today. This is the front page of the Daily Mail, Nick. What have we got? Yep, they've gone with palace anger at assault on the Queen's legacy. It's as if they want to bring down monarchy, say, insiders. And then there's a series of other very damning stories at the top, like uh, Sarah Vine, Harry is a damaged man, and I feel for him, yes. Robert Hartman. Thank goodness our late Queen didn't have to endure this. So I had to endure it because I decided to watch. You've watched it? I watched the first episode and it was specifically for work because I'm a professional. I was like, I'm going to have to talk about this on GB News. I'm going to have to talk about it on the Weekly Skeptic podcast available on all platforms. So I thought I better watch it. And I've managed to watch the first episode. And I've come out with basically feeling the same as I went in, that Harry's a damaged young man and Meghan's a sort of narcissistic, unlikable opportunist. And it's exactly what I thought. If you watch it... prejudices were confirmed. They were, but I, was, I went in with an open mind and came out with the same view. I mean... The, the, the parts about Diana are very moving. There's footage of Princess Diana trying to stop the paparazzi photographing her yeah. children an excessive amount on a ski holiday. And I find it very moving because we all love Diana. I, I remember my own childhood and I just thought uh, Diana was so great. And then Harry was, was obviously deeply wounded by his mother's death. But that's a very moving section as well. Then he goes to Lesotho and tries to continue the legacy of Princess Diana. I thought that was very admirable. Now, where it all goes wrong is where it involves Meghan because what he seems to have done in my armchair analysis, uh, sort of Freudian analysis, he's trying to sort of replace his mother. He says that Meghan was very, is, was very like Diana. The key difference is Diana was shy and didn't like the attention, whereas Meghan's an actress who's just loving this role no, wait, of her life. You really think that following seeing one episode of this, you think it is all about Meghan. Isn't Harry partly to blame for the way in which he's been estranged from his family? Yeah, he's partly to blame, but what he says is, he says he, he, at first she gave up everything, then he gave up, he sacrificed everything to enter her world. What he's done is, and you see that she has total control. You see their body language. He's sort of constantly looking to her for approval while she just stares dead ahead at the camera like, in, like her, loving her acting role. Yes, and I think... He's a great white shark. Right. It's and and Leo, he's just Leo, become Leo, lost. Can we really, though, Leo, in all seriousness, can we possibly have any genuine insight into this relationship? People we don't know. Of course, we're watching this Netflix show, but this has been hugely orchestrated. Uh, it's fabricated. You know, really, is there much insight to be gleaned? Yeah, I, th I think there is, because uh, we've seen with another royal, with Prince Andrew, you know, sometimes people present themselves and reveal the most when they think they're, they're being the best advocates for themselves. Like <laughs> Prince Andrew's right. uh, interview with Emily Maitlis, he was in control of that. And he still managed to reveal so much through... He thought it went well. Yeah, he, thought, <laughs> he was like, let's do another one. So do you think Harry and Meghan think this has gone well? Bear in mind that they will have had editorial control, presumably. They, yeah. will, they will have, uh, you know, shaped this, crafted it. And they, they, this is the best advert you can imagine for them. And you're still coming out and saying they right. look like horrible people. Because, yeah, exactly. Meghan thinks this has gone well. Because if she is, she obviously has dark triad traits, which is narcissism, Machiavellianism, psychopathy. I don't know which one she has, but at least one. And, 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 and that just comes across. But, of course, she lacks the self-awareness to realise it. She's also rude about the Queen. She does that curtsy. I'm not onto that bit yet, but I've seen clips where she does that curtsy and it's kind of mocking uh, a royal family and the, yeah. our traditions. And Harry just sort of even looks uncomfortable himself at that moment. But, yeah, right. it's, it's, it's tragic watching it. I'm not saying it, he, had no, he has no blame at all. I'm just saying I come out with some sympathy for this sensitive young man who lost his mother, but I come out with zero sympathy for Meghan. Leo, yeah. do you have any interest in watching it? Not really, not really. Not even yeah. to, to uh, create content for my own uh, YouTube channel now. <laughs> yeah, we're not here now. to advertise other projects, guys. Come on, well, focus. I think it's, it's almost like a Rorschach blot that people can look at because so many people on the left, like The Guardian gave it, gave it three stars. So many people on the left, you know, see her as a, this icon of fighting back against systemic oppression. What, this uh, billionaire or whatever yeah, she is? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's the, the language they use. They're talking about, uh, they're talking about we're going to reveal... My truth. We're going to reveal our personal truth. It's like, what about the actual truth? Can we not have the oh, actual truth? Oh, you're so old-fashioned, Leo. Actual truth.